Come on now, the podcast, baby, and you're rocking with Nikki T. Um, I'm coming to y'all with a speak your mind segment, man. Just speak your mind, man. Um, we had a lot going on with the Olympics the past week or two, and I just wanted to dive into the men's basketball side of it because what we got was a freaking treat, man. It was amazing basketball. It had us on our feet. We were in tune. We were locked in, and it was just overall a great thing to see. We got to take in this moment that we got from these guys here. We got a moment where we got to see LeBron James, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant all on the court together where it meant something. And it couldn't come at a better time for all of them to come together and give us this one last moment um, of their careers. At the end of the day, this is probably it, man. Definitely for LeBron. Maybe Curry wants to play at 40. We all know that he has the shooting ability to still go out there and help the team at 40 years old. And maybe Durant wants to go about and keep playing. Durant loves basketball. But to get these three figures, three top 15 players basically at the end of their careers to give us one more, you know, view of, of, of greatness together, it was an amazing thing to watch. I just want to give them a a clap, a round of applause for, you know, for the moment. Some people are going to harp on, you know, that the games were close and, 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 and it shouldn't even been that close. But God damn it, guys, this is not 1992. Get that out y'all minds, please. I'm, I'm sick of hearing about what the 1992 team did. And Charles Barkley coming on here and they're talking about, you know, how, how, how our team with the players that we have should just be running through it. This is not that time. What 1992 did? was grow this time for it the basketball around the international stage to be like this and for them to give the US even though we have the greatest talent a run for their money because these these players are playing with each other every summer every summer these players are playing together not team USA they're not playing together all summer they're in Cabo Cabo after 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 the season or or after their team get eliminated, or after they win the championship, after they play the 82-game season and, and, and 20 more games in the playoffs. That's what the NBA players are doing. You don't get to play with your guys every summer after summer after summer. And I know we had all the talent. We did have a lot of talent. Don't, don't get me wrong. Our talent was still top, top-notch. top I guess top our top 10 players are top 25 players. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Then you got Drew Holiday, probably the top 40 player. And Derek White, probably a top 50, 60 player. But times has changed. So imagine going to the court. You ever want to play basketball? Uh, I don't know if y'all did. Or if y'all did, y'all did it. Y'all, whatever, it don't matter. You ever want to play basketball and you were really good. And then you played with somebody else just randomly. You picked on the team and they were really good. But y'all games didn't match together. And you played against another team who, who played together all the time. Even though their talent wasn't like that, but they play together. They know where each other is going to be. They're setting screens, back screens, and they know how to play basketball together. And that's what we got from the other teams, even though they weren't as talented for the most part. But they're still way more talented than it was in 1992. Because God, Lord, if y'all watch those games from when our USA team played other countries, they were god-awful. They were terrible. But they, but the, the our team built it globally for other players to start earlier developing their game and caring about basketball because they knew that they could make they had a chance to make it to the NBA or or just be a great player and that's what changed the game from now how their development was uh, uh, overseas to 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 now and that's what I'm saying that's a big difference and that's why the games were closer than it should be even though we got LeBron we got Steph we got Durant we got Booker we got Tatum we got and Bede, we got AD, we got AE, we got, you know, we got a, 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 a boatload of talent, a, a bam out of bio. But the difference is the world is better. <laughs> Team Canada has t- 10, 11 NBA players. Back in 1992, I think there were nine 
total players that played overseas that was in the NBA. In total. And when the, the Team USA went to go play Croatia and Lithuania, they had two and one player that was in the NBA at that moment. They had like a total of three players combined when they got to the gold medals and the medal rounds of the of the of the championship. This is a whole different ball game. Fred arguably has one of the best players in the world or would will be in the next two years. In in Victor Wimbayama. They got Goldberg coming off the bench. Uh, even though he's, you know, he's not giving you all of that, but he's still 7'2". And the way FIBA rules are where your big 7'2", 7 7'4 7 players could just sit in the paint and not have to move no three seconds. The rules are different, and, and, it, and it benefits the players that played in FIBA rules for most of their life because they understand the game and, and, and how it's going to go along. But the NBA players have to adapt from what they're normally accustomed to, and they have to do it in a short amount of time. They, they don't get as much time as, as everybody else do. Because like I said, they're traveling. They do everything else that they want to do after the season. So it's a big difference. And that's why the world has caught up or it seems that they caught up when it comes to these games when you're playing against each other like that. So I don't want to hear about all this crap that we didn't blow out teams. No, just take the, take the moment in that we got a gold medal. And we did it in stunning fashion. Steph Curry was downright amazing. He had everybody on their feet. When we needed a big bucket the last two games, Steph Curry provided it. And it's changing the narrative on him from a lot of people saying that he's not clutch. Because in these moments when the United States needed him, he hit the big clutch three against Serbia to put us up. And then God knows what he did last night. Um, big three after big three after big three when France was on their way. You know, they, they, they made it a game because let's keep it quite honest. We were turning the ball over. We didn't even care about that ball. We, uh, <laughs> the, the way we cared about that ball at the end of the game and the turnovers that we did to get France back in the game was downright just, just bad. I mean, and Steph Curry was a part of it. LeBron James was a part of it. Anthony Edwards, Kevin Durant was a big part of it. But at the end of the day, they got the job done. And it's kudos to those guys because it was a sight to see. Uh, and... Damn, man, it was just it was just an amazing time, amazing moment, man. And I'm not one of those people that's gonna come out here and, and hate and, and and diminish what 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 they did and what we got to see from these players. Um and on a short amount of time to practice and get, you know, accustomed to the fever rules. It's just different. We have to accept that. And I'm glad that they got challenged. I'm glad it wasn't a 30 point, 35, 40 point blow out every game because we got to watch some fun, interesting basketball. And the game before against Serbia, Joker's a bad boy. And if you don't see Joker impact on the game besides him scoring and passing, then you just don't know damn basketball. And if you thought that the United States was going to blow out Serbia for another time, then you just don't know basketball again. Or you don't know sports. You don't know about other people competing and how hard it is to beat a team three times. And to do it, to be the blowout of the team three times, no matter what their talent is or what it says around them, that's just downright hard. So Serbia has the best player in the world. No doubt about it. No, I don't give a, what y'all think. Joker is the best player in the world, and it's not even close. And if you really watch the game and know the game, he, he controls the game by um, his big body is just weighing on people. He just pounding on everybody the whole game and he has an amazing touch around the basket about around the basket and his, and his IQ is second to none and he sets amazing screens and what his amazing screens does is he get guards wide open coming off the screen so team US didn't know to go under the screen or over the screen you go over the screen you get caught up you go under the screen their guards hitting threes and if you switch it you get joker on the guard barbecue chicken ain't nothing you can do about it so that's how he controls the game with his screen set. And a lot of the small minds of basketball who don't understand it don't know how good he is because you don't see those little things that he does and that he brings to the game. And that's how I knew from the get-go. I called it two, three weeks ago on our podcast. I said, Rudy. Rudy said, who's going to be the biggest threat to them? I say, Serbia. They got the best player in the game, and they got a lot of people who, if they get hot on the right night because – we all know basketball has changed now because people could shoot. 
So as long as you have a great shooting day from three, you have a chance against anybody. And there's nothing you could really do about it. You could hike up your defense, but these players are better. They're not just sitting there and running stagnant offense. They are moving. They are constant moving, constant motion, constant setting screens, back screens, down screens, you know, coming off of it, and it's just hard to guard. So that's what we got from Serbia, and they were just downright on fire the first half. They were hitting threes off the backboard. They were, you know, fadeaway threes. And it was all because of Joker and his screen setting ability that freed up so much space and got them open looks. But when the Team USA ramped up their defense, that's why in the fourth quarter the game changed because of pressure. They, they, they missed a couple open shots, but for the most part, their legs are getting a little bit tired. And, and the shots that you, you, your legs got into in the first half and the third quarter, they're not getting into it in the fourth quarter because of the, the, the defense that the U.S. The team U.S. was playing, and they started, you know, moving the defense up a little bit more and more and more and more, and it weared on their legs, and that's why they they weren't they weren't making shots. You're not going to tell me that they just a team that was shot blistering the whole first half and third quarter just goes 0 for nine without it being some part of the defense, even though they're wide open on a couple of them, and the pressure changed because the USA started coming back on on a big three and a, and a, and a and one, and it got the game, it got tight. And that's the difference between those players and these players because Team USA and American players can handle the pressure just a little bit differently. And that's why some players are in the NBA and some players are not. Not because the talent is that, that far away. It's just the little things that how you can fit in it on the team and, and how you can handle the pressures in the biggest moments. And that's the biggest, the biggest difference between the two. And then when we come to France, it was a downright physical, and they were just a team that played a home game. They had momentum. The crowd is into it. All the fans care, you know. And that game probably would have been a 20, 25-point game if they were playing on a neutral site. But the fans are hyped. They're, they're, they're cheering you on. And having a home court game in a championship game is a big difference. And that's why Wemby Yamba played a little bit better because he played against people that he's kind of accustomed or got accustomed to playing with for most of the season. So that's why that was one of his best games out of the whole tournament. But at the end of the day, shout out to Team USA. And deservingly so, LeBron James, Captain America, got the MVP because he was the most consistent player throughout the whole tournament. Whether it was giving you 15, 16 points, 10 assists per game, seven, eight rebounds, guarding Joker. In the in the in the fourth quarter when we got Embiid and we couldn't put Embiid on him, that's the difference between LeBron getting the MVP and not Durant or Steph Curry who was phenomenal the last two games. But in a whole in a vacuum of it, Steph Curry was terrible the first half of the tournament. He just showed up. He was still on vacation, like he went to France just for to vacation, and you know he had the family there and they they eating the best of foods and. and and relax, and, and then when it came to money time, he showed up. But the whole tournament, Steph was pretty up and down, and mostly down, and then he got hot. And then he showed you why he's the baddest motherfucking shooter in the league, baddest person with the ball in his hand, why the impact of him having the ball in his hand. I said it was the best I ever seen in my life as an offensive player and his impact that he brought on the team, and that's why Draymond is able to stay in the league so long. And, and Clay made a, a good name for himself because of the impact and the, and the pressure that's, that Steph takes off of them by just being on the court and how the defense has to extend their defense 40 feet up the court and, and not leave him and then chase him around screens and how, you know, he sets good back screens and he gets somebody open and, a, and then somebody set a down screen for him and then he pops out and two players are jumping to him and then somebody gets a back cut layup. That's the impact that he has on the offense and I thought it was probably the best I ever seen in history or, you know, until Joker came around and I think his now he caught up to Steph because Steph he slipped a little bit as a you know, how dynamic he was because the MVP years you weren't fucking with Steph. You couldn't hold him, couldn't control him. He was shooting off the dribble, he was shooting one leggers, floaters, off the dribble. You just couldn't do nothing with him. But now he you know, getting a little bit older and Joker it just became that damn phenomenal in the way he brings to the team. So Steph stepped up the last two games, and we needed him. But in the whole tournament, it was LeBron James. LeBron James brought the defensive effort. He controlled the offense. He, he 
He he he scored when we needed him to score for the most part. He made the right passes. He had a lot of turnovers, but at the end of the day, he was still the most valuable player of the tournament. And that's why he's still the best American player in the league. He's still – you could throw Embiid in there as an American player because he played with the U.S. team. LeBron James is still the best American player in the league. And it's maybe semi-close. I don't see nobody else that I'll choose over LeBron James in a big game, in a big moment when I need him. And you could go back to their L.A. season. And they didn't win any games. Who, who's he, who is he losing against? The best player in the world. Joker, who impacts the game second to none. And he's from another country. So LeBron James is still the best – American player, he's behind Luka maybe, um, but his defense, kind of whatever. LeBron, I know he can play defense when he needs to. And then he's behind Giannis because Giannis is just going to bring the full force the whole game. Offense, defense, not a great all-ball defender, but great help side defender, and he's impactful with that. And then you have Shea. You have Shea. Shea, I'll give him over LeBron right now just because of how great he can score. But still, as an American player, LeBron, you can start finding people below him. But at the age of 40, he's still the best. And I don't give a damn what y'all say. Still the best American, and it's not close. Steph Curry's still up there just because of his impact. Kevin Durant, I'll still take him any day of the week. And then you have to look at the new young players that's coming up. Maybe Anthony Edwards. But from this tournament, we know it's not Jason Tatum. It's not Jason Tatum. And that's why he was on the bench. Because he's not better than six. He's not better than seven. So when Steph, when Steve Kerr went on there and said, it's a math problem. Yeah, the math problem is number 13. Six and seven, he wasn't better than. And then, and that's at his position. And then, can he fit in and do all the other things that you need him to do? Was he better than Devin Booker is doing that? No. He didn't hit a three this whole tournament. Devin Booker was a better spotted shooter than him, and that's what you needed with a team that's going to have Steph Curry with the ball, LeBron James with the ball, Kevin Durant with the ball, Anthony Edwards with the ball. Can you be a person that's going to sit in the corner and, and make all the plays that we need you to do? Are you going to do all the dirty work? Are you going to be guarding everybody 70, 80 feet up the court? Can you? Are you going to do that? Are you going to be the, the other rebounder? Can you guard the other bigs? Can you guard little guards? No, Devin Booker was better than him in all those facets of the game. And that's why he played over Jason Tatum. It was simple as that. And then if, is he better than Anthony Edwards? Can he do, do what Anthony Edwards do? Can he go chase guards up the court? Can he be a pest on defense? Can he get little steals? Can he get the passing lanes? Can he do all those things against little guards? No, that's why he didn't play over Anthony Edwards. And Anthony Edwards was just such a firework that he could bring scoring on, on. Scoring also was a big thing for Anthony Edwards that he brought to a couple games that we needed. And Tatum was just a statue out there for the most part. And even coming from the finals, he didn't play that well either. And it lingered on to the Olympic play. So everybody getting into their, their panties in a bunch about why he didn't play and why Steve Kerr didn't play him. He just wasn't good enough to play on his team when the games were this much closer than it was before. And Steve Kerr went out there and said, I felt like an idiot for not playing him the first Serbia game. I felt like an idiot. How can you play t over 10 players in a 40-minute game? He came back against Serbia. It felt like a bigger idiot for not playing him. But Steve Kerr, keep it real. Tell the world the truth. He's not good enough on this roster for this team. He doesn't fit to what we need him to do because we don't need him to be the star. We don't need him to pat, pat the ball, step back left. We don't need him to do that on this roster. We need him to fit in. We need him to go hit corner threes. We need him to hit spot-up threes, which he didn't do. We need him to guard guards and, and be able to chase them and disrupt them on defense against all these players that we're playing against that's coming off all these moving around and doing all, you know, coming off ball screens, back screens, and, and, and being real quick with the ball. We need you to be up on them. We need you to be able to switch on somebody else if we have to or chase over the screen, chase under the screen and get back to your guy. And Devin Booker did all those things better than him. Anthony Edwards did all those things better than him. And I can argue Derek White did those things better than him also because Derek White is used to doing these things for Boston Celtics. And that's why he played over him for most of the, the tournament, except for the last game he was not so great. But Jason Tatum, what did we get from him? 38% shooting in the Olympics when everybody else is shooting over 50, 60%. Come on, guys. 
That's why he didn't play. I don't want to hear about he's an all pro. He's an NBA champion. He's on the cover of NBA 2K. That means nothing right now at this moment. It means absolutely nothing at this moment for us trying to win the gold. And if we'd have lost the gold and he played, y'all would have been talking crap while he played. He should have been on the bench. Steve Kerr made that decision for us. And he should be unapologetic about it. I get it. You came over here to the Olympics to have a good time and you thought you were going to play. But at the end of the day, even if Kawhi Leonard was on the team, it would have been further on the bench because he took Derek, Derek White took those minutes. But Kawhi would have played a little bit more. And he's not better than Kawhi healthy. He's not better than LeBron healthy. He's not better than Kevin Durant healthy. So what are we talking about here? His mom could go to, to Twitter and, and say, oh, my son isn't hurt and, and, you know, blame it on Steve Kerr. Yeah, blame your son for not being the right fit for this team at this moment. And now he's saying that he possibly don't know if he's going to play for 2028. It's too early to decide. That's going to be your time. LeBron's going to be gone. KD might be gone. We're on his last leg. That's your time to step up. That's between you and Anthony Edwards to guide this team. That's when we can put the ball in your hand and let you pat, pat, pat a little bit. Do your thing. Step back, you know, because you're, cause you, cause your shot can get off against anybody because you have that high arc release. You take bad shots, but hopefully by that time you'll be a little bit better, more understanding of the game. And we will be able to use you on Team USA in 2028. But for right now, it's not your time, it's not your moment. Just like Tyrese Halliburton. Not his time, not his moment. He accepted that. Now for him, I don't know. It should be his time in 2028 also. But shoot, what if John Morant gets get his act together? What if De'Aaron Fox wants to play? You know. I think those guys are better than Halliburton today if they are healthy. So we'll see on 2028, but for him to go out there and, you know, say he's, he should be sad. He should be a little bit upset, but he also should understand that he just wasn't good enough for this roster. 2028 should be a whole different thing for him. It should be a whole different memory. And, with the world catching up and we losing probably three of our best players on this roster this year. We need you to step up and be that guy. Will you be? We'll see. Oh boy. And that's basically what I wanted to dive in for uh Team USA, man. I wanted to go in and give these guys some congratulations. Um so how we appreciate what they did for the for the team USA, um, for the Olympic experience for me personally. I know a lot of y'all enjoyed it also when it came to the basketball and the games. The whole Olympic experience, up and down. I mean, yes, starting from the ceremony, hmm, a lot of things going on. We had the, the woman who they say was a man but really was a woman. You know, that was a story. We got... uh. Uh, the Olympic um, gymnastics um, and trying to take away the medal. Uh, we had Noah Lyles act like a plum fool. <laughs> Noah Lyles acting like a plum fool, man. He went out there, jumped around, jumped for joy, came around smiling and flipping, jumping over the, 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 the banner, jumping over the table and doing 360 turns and you know, and all the energy in the world, and then got carted off the the track field. And we're going to say, oh, he had, you know, COVID, 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 COVID. That's what they claimed after. Now, if you knowingly have COVID, and, you know, he won his 100, and he tested for it after. So, I mean, he probably had it during that race. Why would you come out at the beginning of that race and exert all your energy like that. Would that make sense to? And y'all gonna tell me, well, he was trying to hype himself up. Well, that's not the smart way for him to do it at that moment. And we know how brash and stuff he is. I guarantee you, if that man won that race, he would not have got carted or rolled off that damn track. That man would have been jumping back and forth in our face. It would have been a COVID in sight. It would have been an asthmatic Symptom in sight. 
It would have been joy. The man would have celebrated. He would have did his thing. He would have let us know about it like he always does. And I don't have a problem with it because you should be confident in yourself. You should bring it like that all the time. But I don't want to hear no excuses about COVID because you were out there acting a plum fool the whole time. You talked about the NBA. That's not the world championship. What does that mean? You know why they considered it the world championship in the NBA? Because the best players are running from their countries to the NBA to play there. No doubt about it. The best players from every country is running to the NBA to play there. And that's why we have the best collective group of players in the NBA. And that's why they considered the world championship. But they still went and won the Olympic championship, which is the world championship, if you want to hold them to that. But, yeah, those are the best teams. If you have, like, regular teams and not, like, you're building the whole country around it, Boston will beat anybody from any other league team by 30, 40 points. Because they have a great, the best a comp- the best individuals that came together from the whole wide world on their team in Boston. Better than everybody else around the whole world in whatever league. Because when the, the other leagues, the top leagues, are going to have Pat Beverly be their star player, who's an okay player for most of his career, a great defender. He's going to go over there and average 30 points, 35 points, but he can't do that here. Because it's a difference. The talent is different. The players are better. And they all are here. And the world is catching up. Though. But they still are going to come to the NBA. Now you tell me another league that's just as good as the NBA. And I'll say, okay, maybe we need to change this world championship thing for the NBA teams to call them it that. But until then, until then, it's still the world championship of the NBA. And no allows. Understand that. It is what it is. But you did make it interesting. You, I, you made us tune in. I appreciate you for that. But don't get carted off the, the course of the 200-meter run. And over there, look like you're about to... Everything, the worst thing in your life is happening. You're about to fall out. And when you just came on a damn field like a plum fool, jumping around, skipping... You know, I mean, take your loss, you know, and as American, I mean, we'll take third, but take your loss. And I'll say that for anybody who, who acting like that. And I'm not just going to be over here, and, you know, just because I'm American and just go crazy with it. You know, I'm not doing that, man. Take your loss. Come back the next time. Try again. Because what you try to do was amazing. It was a great feat. You got the hundred by the hair of your chinny chin chin. What a the, the hair of your little Brady Bray braids. <laughs> and you try to do something amazing, man, but didn't get it done ultimately. Got the 100, got a goal there. But ultimately, what we thought was going to be your race was the 200. And you went and got your ass smoked. And I don't think COVID had anything to do with it. I think you just wasn't fast enough. At the end of the day, you go by results. And the results was third place. Shout out to Shakari Richardson. She gave us an amazing moment. Um, she fought back from everything that happened with the the marijuana and not being able to do the Olympics before. And she came back this year, and kudos to her. She did her thing. Um, she got a second place, and there's a whole bunch of you know talk going on about her staying not on the village and you know new rules and them coming over and not getting any time to warm up her and the Jamaicans, and that's why they didn't run. Um, but she still got a second place in the ring, and we'll take that. That's silver. That's good for her, especially coming back from her big fall because after the Olympics, she went down in a spiral. She was getting her ass dusted left and right. She couldn't keep up with anybody. It just looked bad. I thought, and a lot of other people thought, it was over for her, that she will never come back from this. That mental block in her head was going to have her down for probably the rest of her life, we've never seen the greatness that she can have or what she can show us like she did this Olympics because she has speed. Her start off is a little rocky, but she could work on that. And she could be an Olympic champion in a, in a hundred coming up, you know, later on, but she has to work on that because when she gets to that top end speed and she starts chugging, 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 
<laughs> that train be rolling, man. And she's one of the fastest women alive, and it's good to see. But then she gave us one of the best iconic moments of the Olympics with that. That look was cold. I, I got to give it to her, man. That, that was cold, man, because she started that race in four places. She just said, I got you. I got you. And I definitely got your ass, girl. And I'm going to let you know. And I'm going to do it in some in a good form. And, and, and it's a little show offy. But damn it, when you work so hard and you come back from the fight and the demons that she came from, she deserved to show out a little bit and let motherfuckers know that she's the truth. And that she's back and she helped the the women's team, the relay race, get a goal. And she was a big part of it because she wasn't winning. They weren't, they weren't winning. But they gave it to her for that last leg. <laughs> and it was fucking deuces. And it was good to see her come back. Because the whole situation before, and a lot of us in the United States and all over the world are like, it's marijuana. It's not helping her performance. It shouldn't have been bad for her in the first place. But under the guidelines of the Olympic Committee, she knows what that what she did was wrong, and she can't be doing that. And that's just what it is. We can't do nothing about it. It's a whole world, and that's their committee for the whole world have to abide by. And she did it, and she had to accept that, and she had to deal with that. But you know, sometimes you have to fall hard to see if you're going to get back up. Some people don't get back up. Some people stay on the fucking ground and they lay there. But she did it. She got her ass up. She rose up. She got a silver. Which arguably, who knows what would have happened if maybe she got her warm up. Maybe she, you know, or maybe she had a better start. And she could have beat the girl from St. Lucia. But that didn't happen. But she made up for it the rest of the Olympics. And that's good for her, man. I hope that she continues to stride and be great. and. We're going to tune in. Um, 2028 should be a big year for her in Los Angeles. Um, I'm keep rooting for her. The whole world is rooting for you, um, lady. Keep doing what you do. Be great. Um, and that's what I got for the Olympics. Um, we got the women going for their gold medal. They should get that pretty easily. Um, they've been playing great for the most part. Their, 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 their bigs has been amazing. The guard play has been a little shaky. Jackie Young has been great, though. She's been doing her thing. Could this team have used Caitlyn? We already said that a million times. Of course. Could the Olympics have used Caitlyn? Hell to the yeah. But she's not there. And we have to accept that. And end of the day, what we keep conveying to everybody is that it was about bigger than basketball. It was just bigger than basketball. And just like the 1992 team, it was bigger than basketball because the world got to see these amazing athletes at the peak of their game. Well, maybe not Larry Bird, who was on the sideline, relaxing his back, and Magic Johnson was going through certain, certain things. But they were still the best in the world. And they were they did it in a style that made everybody want to watch, and it made the younger generation want to get better around the world and start preparing their game from an earlier age focusing on basketball because they know that basketball could change their lives from either where they're from or, you know, in a different country like the U.S. if they got better at it like they did. And that's what it could have did for the women's game. They could have used her and, you know, her spotlight that she brings to the, that, that she would have brought to the league. Oh, Lord. My wife is calling me. And the spotlight that she would have brought to the league would have changed maybe the next five-year-old or four-year-old, you know, life that's in a different country that's able to see her and say, hey, that's somebody's game. I want to mimic my game after. And because it's exciting and it grows the game and then women basketball becomes something entirely different in the next 10 to 15, 20 years. And it could have been because of Caitlin being there. But neither here nor there. She's not there. And I have to accept it. And my wife, of course, she's going to call back. And I'm declining game. I'm calling it back. I'm getting in trouble for this, guys. But I do it for y'all because I love y'all. Come on now. Um, so what I'm going on to? Oh, Caitlyn going the game, but that's not what's happening. Whatever. She's getting an amazing time to take a break, freshen up her mind, come back, finish these last 14 games on this historic run that she's on. Rookie of the year by far. Not even close. So stop doing that. 
um, because her impact is second to none, and what she's bringing to the game is just different than anybody else. Shout out to Andrew. She's been amazing. Don't get me wrong, but there's levels to this. There's freaking levels to this. And... Like I said, there's levels to this. And that's what, um, she's a rookie of the year, and it's by far. But let's also dive into Brianna Stewart's playing amazing, Adrian Wilson playing amazing, and the women should get their gold. And we had no doubt about it. So kudos to them. And that's literally how we're wrapping up this, this, this little soliloquy I went on today. Um, no, Rudy, just me. Rudy rants all the time. It's time for me to rant. Not even rant. Like I say, I'm speaking to y'all. Just next week, you know. And hit that follow button if you haven't already. Um, Come on now, podcast. We are doing amazing things. We enjoy y'all. Y'all keep supporting us. We love y'all. Um, we're trying to make this as big as possible. Like, we keep bringing amazing content. Rudy's going to rent another five times before the day is over. I'm pretty sure he's going to get on the mic. He's not going to tell me. He doesn't love me like that, but I love him. That's my guy. Um, Y'all keep commenting, man. Under here, tell me what you think about the, the Olympics. Tell us what you think about the team USA, men's basketball team, women's basketball team, Noah Lyles, Shakari Richardson. And uh, please weigh in. Um, we always like to comment back. It's fun for us. We truly enjoy this commenting and going back. As long as you know, we're being respectful in the comments. We enjoy it. Let's keep it going. Like, we just want to talk sports or whatever else that's fun in the world and go from there. Um, but I'm wrapping up. Um, have a good one. Enjoy. Come on now to podcast. We love you. Hit that follow button right now. Have a good one, man.